The real promise of AI, I think, always has been, and this has been heightened by generative AI and large language models, is the possibility of flexible, useful provision of information to human decision makers. Today, more than ever, a lot of work that humans are engaged in involve problem solving, not just in offices, not just in creative industries, but even as an electrician, even as a plumber, most of what you do is a series of problem solving tasks. And the irony of today is that information is abundant, just go on the web, everything, many things you don't want are there, but useful information is highly scarce. If you need something to be done, to find that useful information is increasingly difficult. The promise of AI is to make that sort of useful information readily, understandably, and rapidly available to human decision makers in a way that will make them more productive in the tasks that they perform and even more promisingly imp uh, increase the range of new tasks that they can achieve. But I believe that's not where we are going. Forget the hype, forget some of the promise, so forget the naming of everything co-pilot. Uh, I think there are four major roadblocks ahead of that. I would call them excessive automation, loss of informational diversity, human machine misalignment, and monopolized control of information. But to give you a perspective about what these roadblocks are and how I'm going to frame it, I wanna to go to the beginning. And I think ever since the beginning of the computer age, there have been two battling visions that have some similarity, but fundamentally, different ways of thinking about humans and machines and fundamentally different implications. The first one goes back to that amazing mathematician, Alan Turing, whom all of you know, really completely breakthrough uh, in so many areas. But I think he was a much, much better mathematician than a philosopher. And I think his philosophy of framing the question of human-machine interaction has misled the field as well as, uh, as, well as I think, uh, created this tendency for the, the wrong type of AI. And I think the, uh, the sort of the idea which is articulated in Turing, which is that what you want is autonomous machine intelligence, or what you want and ach can achieve is autonomous machine intelligence, meaning machine intelligence, high level capabilities, just like humans, and autonomous meaning that it's self-acting, it doesn't need the step-by-step -step or uh, overall guidance of humans, was uh, you know, swallowed hook, line, and sinker, and perhaps even further advanced by many of the AI pioneers. For example, the Dartmouth Project in 1956, where the field of AI was christened, was all about, you know, machines are going to do everything humans can do quickly and much better, just hurrah. And I think, again, there's, uh, on the surface, perhaps that's okay, perhaps that's where, where we're going, and we can debate that. But I want to first point out, before I come to those issues, that ever since the beginning, there was a very different set of ideas articulated more or less at the same time uh, as, as Alan Turing, and I would associate them mostly with Norbert Wiener, another brilliant mathematician and engineer and a sort of a colleague of mine, never overlapped at MIT. Uh, Norbert Wiener sort of articulated a very different idea, much more concerned about the autonomy of robots and, uh, and machines. And it's, it's a perspective that Simon Johnson and I in our book call machine usefulness rather than machine intelligence. Meaning that the objective is to make machines useful to humans at the service of humans with the right set of communication between machines and humans, could be interface, could be something else, and machines providing services to humans.